in-depth play-by-play uh, of what I did. We're also rolling that up on the summary screen and we're sorting that by application and then within there what I did within that application. So again, for that Excel doc, I spent 17 minutes. Here's the title of it, OIA Calc Template. Uh, for email, firing through a few emails as many of you uh, probably do in your morning time as well. So I spent three minutes on this email heading after Gino here, uh, so on and so forth. So what I could do is, uh, just kind of continue working throughout the day. You see everything's going to be captured here at the end of the day. I can come back uh, bucket this time. Let me uh, start bucketing some of it now to show you um, easy ways to do that, ways to streamline that, and maybe some shortcuts that I'd like to make you aware of. So to move this time over, so let me actually take this uh, Excel uh, doc that we looked at. All right, so we got 17 minutes on here, uh, and uh, the application did not find a match for it. So that means we've got a keyword-based rules engine, which I'm going to show you. It kind of runs in the background as we record this time. So if it had recognized a keyword, so let's say if I had OIA calc um, template, if I had that as a keyword where I'm telling the system that every time you see this keyword, I want it to go to this certain project then, it would automatically bucket that. Of course, it didn't see that. So what I'm going to do is uh, do that categorization myself. So what I'm going to do is use move, this move to project dropdown. So I can say that uh, OIA stands for this client, this project. Uh, I can uh, add an annotation here where I am going to say I want to categorize this to um, uh, this project. And then I can also add an annotation. The annotation is basically the uh, human speak which is what's going to show up on the uh, timesheet and on the invoice. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that Excel title, uh, hitting the rounding setting here. So you can see I've got six minutes set as my rounding setting. So I'm popping it up to 18 minutes, and then I've got the title uh, of the document here. It's rolling up to 18 minutes, and I've got that uh, represented right here. Okay, so that's the way to do these things one off. Now, if I want to create a rule that will do this automatically for me, uh, let me show you how to do that. So for example, for this email with Gino, let's say that every time I uh, email back and forth with Gino, I want this to always go to the same project. So what I'll do is I'll uh, choose a the project for Gino here, and I'm gonna hit that second uh, mouse over, which is to create a rule. So what I can do here is I can look for a certain keyword that's gonna help me out probably going to be Gino's uh, name or even his email address. So let me go straight to his email here. So what I'm telling the system now is I want to create a rule. So anytime you see Gino's email address, I want you to bucket it into this category. Um, I can also apply this rule to the past, which means uh, previous correspondences that Chromatic captured for me back and forth with Gino. I can move those to this project as well. And then I can preview the rule to see what I'm categorizing. And now I can uh, create uh, create the rule and categorize it going forward as well. So uh, this is now anytime I receive an email from Gina, anytime I write an email to him, I'm always going to get this time uh, bucketed to that project automatically. So then as I log in, uh, his emails will not be under my unbuilt time. They'll already be on my time sheet and under the client and uh, matter for him. Uh, let me show you a shortcut how to do this from the timeline. So I showed you the play-by-play -play uh, of this morning. So I've got some text messages in here as well. Uh, let's say that everything I did from 8.30 to uh, the 9 o'clock hour, let's say this is all the same thing. What I'm going to do to select everything here is left click on that topmost entry that started at 8.30 and then I'm going to hold down the shift key while I select everything in between. What that does uh, gets me a selection of all my consecutive entries. I can now bucket this to a uh, uh, client project again, so I can say I want to bucket it here. Give it an annotation. Say I'm preparing a document for Kevin. So what this does is uh, groups it all uh, to the same client, same project. Let me not hide uh, the categorized stuff. So you can see all of these entries. So they're all still here, but now they have the same annotation. They also have the same category, which you can see on the right side here. Now as I go back to my summary screen, these are actually down to my timesheet. So these are all the entries I moved down to my timesheet. So I still have a bunch of little computer entries, but they've now all been consolidated, uh, rolled up to that 24 minute increment. And now when I send it across the wire, so if I'm exporting to a third party system, such as, um, Cosmo, Cleo, QuickBooks Online, FreshBooks, 
or any of the other accounting practice management systems that we integrate with, uh, they will show up as if they were time entries created directly uh, in those systems over there. Um, let's see, another way, um, actually let's go over the integrations while we are on that thread and then we'll get into mobile. Uh, and then I'll get into your questions if you do have any with a couple minutes left here. So setting up integration, so if I want to set up my uh, uh, Chromatic to work with Clio, what I'm going to do is hit that connect button next to Clio. I'll sign into Clio once and I'll have that connection established with Chromatic so that I can um, bounce things back and forth so I can send my time entries over to Clio. What I can also do is import my project matter list uh, from Clio into Chromatic. So that will now be available under my client's project screen. <laughs> See, I've got an import from Cosmolex here. Uh, it's going to be the same thing for Clio users, QuickBooks Online users, so any integration that you're using, you'll be able to import that list over to Chromata so that you can assign time to those clients and projects and then kick it back across uh, the wire as you would like. Uh, with a minute to go, let's get into mobile since I know it's a popular topic for folks. So here's my Android time entries from this morning. So these are captured from my Android app. So I've got text messages and phone calls in here. I guess I've only texted so far this morning. I got the phone number, the person I was texting to and from, and then the time spent over on the right side here. For iPhone, we're going to do something similar, uh, but we do have to go through your carrier since iPhone's a little more locked down in terms of letting us access the device. So you can import for iPhone time, uh, Verizon, AT&T, or uh, Sprint. Uh, logs, Vodafone now supported as well, so we can get those time logs in from uh, the website. You'll get a spreadsheet and bring them in here, and uh, we can uh, categorize those from here as well. We also do mobile uh, email time for Gmail users, so if you're using Gmail, you can actually set that integration up. Uh, that is going to be uh, down at the very bottom here. This is where you can, can connect Chrometa up with your Gmail account, and this is uh, good for mobile. Uh, again, mobile users who use Gmail. So I use Gmail on my phone, and uh, by using this, I can get my Gmail time uh, into Chrometa here as well from the time that I spend on my phone. Okay, so covered a lot of ground. I'm happy to get any questions now if you have any. Let me show you how to get additional info uh, as well. So from our contact page. Uh, we do uh, phone, email, live chat. That's available six days a week, Sunday through Friday, and includes holidays as well. So I had somebody on uh, MLK Day Monday, President's Day, we'll have uh, folks on uh, as well. Uh, you can also start a live chat within the app here in the lower right. Let me give you a couple of links that may be of interest. If you don't currently have a Kermeta account, you can uh, use this link to sign up. So I'll put this into the chat window. Sign up link, and then you can also uh, set up that one-on-one -on -one training that I mentioned to you. Whoops. Okay, so that's going to be this link here. If you want to set up a complimentary one-on-one -on -one training, we actually book a half hour uh, or um, even a little longer session. So if you want to get that scheduled, uh, this is going to be the link for you. Okay, uh, looks like we're good on questions. So I thank you for joining. Hope it was helpful today. We will get an email out to you with a recording so if you want to rewatch anything. But again, one on one training if you're interested in terms of the next steps, getting into more detail with your own um, case and how you uh, keep your time, manage your, your, your time and billing and such. Uh, so we can get you uh, set up with one of our expert trainers one on one if you're interested in that. So again, thank you for joining. Hope it was helpful. Hope everyone has a great rest of your Thursday and uh, also hope to hear from you soon.